Miss Cheryl Boyce Taylor. We are maybe each other through two different mirrors. I know what it is to be a son and long for a living mother. You, a mother, now longing for a living son. When I heard the news, I do admit that I first thought of you. You are not obligated to believe this, of course, but I imagine there are ways in which specific types of loss make kin out of folks who are not kin. I had read the stories about how Malik was born with his kidneys half the size of a normal kidney, begging him for mercy from the moment he brought him into the world. I had read the stories of how there was an older twin, born into the world mere seconds after Malik was born, suffering from the same kidney afflictions, how he held on for eight hours before finally succumbing. Malik was your only, and I was my mother's youngest. My mother wrote, as you wrote and still write. I like to think that I learned to write first from her, though she didn't teach me English in my earliest youth. It was Arabic that I first learned, writing along the page in a direction I would later fight to unlearn, from the right to the left. I think there is a very particular mercy in being born to a woman who writes, or at least to a woman who sees a world worth writing about. I'm a poet, like you. I came to your work as I came to so much work in the world of poetry, watching, admiring from afar. I first sat on the floor in a crowded New York room in some year when I had traveled to the city, maybe listening to your son's raps, as I often did. There was something about the rhythm he held in his voice in the slow crawl of funk layering the instrumentals that made me feel like I was truly in the city. There was always something about the way a tribe called Quest negotiated the noise around them, almost becoming it, until everything was awash with a sound you desired. Thank you.